box up. I just know, and they base it on the GFA. They, instead of using a percentage, they use uh, months expenditures. So they look at the two month expenditures that they have. In, they call it their operating budget, which is the equivalent of our general fund. And uh, he said the minimum amount would have to be 20 million, but then keep it at 25. That's the number they have. So I just want to share that with you. Okay. I, I thought I, their fund balance, though. I mean, that's even separate from the fund balance. Well, you, well no, your stabilization account is part of your fund balance. Like when we had $32 million in the fund balance, the county stabilization is part of that thing that you can if, if the state doesn't play, we leave behind the state, we were in the state. We're still behind. Well, uh, I, I, I don't know what the state Not to the extent yeah. of yeah. two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, that took me years off of my life. That, 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 if I remember correctly, even though we had the money, we said No, you could you, you could exercise what you had in your and I'll hold you in your hand to have that for a report. Yeah, no comment on that. No, actually no. But I just said I wouldn't change that. <laughs> but you would have been able to exercise because it says in the event of a fiscal disaster. Mm -hmm. That to me is a fiscal disaster and you get two million dollars. You know what I'm saying? I, just want I don't know. I just don't want to want that kind of money up. Uh, well, you, but you control it. <laughs> you council control it, not you. The council <laughs> controls it. All right. I want to learn about a little space. Me too. All right. Are we ready? No. Yeah. All right. We'll bring the uh, November 16th Parks and Space Committee meeting. Anybody uh, for courtesy to floor? Seeing none. Uh, we will jump around a little bit. We, we will let the, uh, um, we'll do the discussion regarding the Mincy Lake Rehabilitation Project with Mr. Wilson here. Okay, so. great. Oh, number seven, sorry, yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jim Wilson, Recreation Specialist, Northampton County Parks and Rec. Uh, just wanted to update you guys on the conservation and recreation projects and programs we've had going on since May, the last time I uh, <coughs> met with you folks. So at that time, back in May, we were just in the process of organizing Friends of Mincy Lake as the uh, local nonprofit group that would help uh, work with the Commonwealth and the county to um, rehabilitate uh, habitat in the lake and the lakeside recreational facilities and infrastructure during this. It's pretty much a once in a lifetime total drawdown of the lake for this dam rehab project. So in June, a month after I met with you folks, uh, Friends of Mincy Lake was officially organized. It operates uh, as a standing committee under the auspices of the Northampton County Junior Conservation School which has been around since the early 80s. It's a you know, registered nonprofit 501c3 charitable organization through which we can write grants um, to fund the project. We've already uh, acquired 38,000 in funding um, just since we organized in June for the, specifically for the lake, the in-lake habitat phase of the project. So this is the organization, Friends of Mincy Lake, uh, nine different organizations, including two entities within the county government, uh, Brian's Shop, the open space uh, program, and then Gordy Heller, my boss, superintendent of parks, and I uh, represent the county parks uh, department on the committee. Um, and you can see the other organizations. We have uh, uh, State Senator Scavello's chief of staff uh, is, serves on the committee representing um, the senator's office uh, and uh, Bob Kilbanks, office manager for Representative Emmerich sits on the committee representing the senator's or the uh, representative's office. And then we have folks from Slate Belt Rising. We have the uh, Center for Independent Living. We have two different folks there that attend regularly. They provide invaluable guidance as far as it relates to handicap access. Uh, and then Martin's Jacoby Watershed Association, John Mauser, who's the project's director for that group, serves as the committee chair. Okay, and that's the focus of our, uh, of our, our efforts here at Mincy Lake. So um, just an aerial view, it's a 117 acre lake, surrounded by 194 acres of land, all owned by the Commonwealth, 311 acres, and leased to the county since 1975. Um, as a county park. I believe it was our very first park that was up and running in the system when we organized as such back in the early mid-70s. So the focus, the entire lake basin, we're going to be constructing um, habitat structures throughout the lake basin, and then we'll be focusing on three areas along the lake shore, the west shore parking lot all the way to the left, the east shore parking lot all the way to the right, 
And then in the southwest corner, the lower left corner of the screen, you see that uh, about a 200-foot stone jetty that sits, sticks out from the, uh, the south shore. Those three recreation areas will uh, undergo some serious improvements. So we've got two phases, essentially, to the project. The first is the uh, in-lake um, fish habitat uh, project. So back in June, Fish and Boat Commission's Habitat Division surveyed, did a visual survey of the lake basin, and a month later in July produced um, this five-year fish habitat management project plan for Northampton County. Um, the plan uh, includes the construction, let me step back real quick. So what we're going to do is build um, 861 structures oh, wow. across about 56 acres of lake, 117 acre lake basin. Um, these are huge structures. Uh, they'll be built, uh, we'll, we'll need 2,000 tons of stone. 1,550 log posts, 355 hemlock boards, and nearly 1,300 uh, rebar pins to fasten all these structures together. So um, they will look like this. The 800, so of those 861 structures, 661 are large-scale structures that will be built in the basin. Um, fish and boat will in-kind all the equipment, the operators, and supervision. Take about two weeks, scheduled for next winter, 2018-19. So we're going to be building 510 rock rubble humps. Now, you, will you be getting that stuff donated or, or with no. that? No. Okay. So the, we need 90, about $94,000 cash to buy all this uh, materials, all this stone, timber, et cetera. We right now have 38000 We secured a uh, federal funding to U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for 30000 That was the maximum amount that we could apply for uh, to go toward the material costs. So if we can find, and I believe some of the folks on our committee uh, who work in, in uh, private sector are going to try to find stone, for example, from some of the stone quarries, because this is all big, you know, riprap rock. Um, so hopefully we, we'll get some donations. Otherwise, we'll be uh, gunning for money, you know, through wherever we can get it, grants, the county, the state, wherever, our friends group. Can I ask a question about sure. these? Are these deep enough so that you don't have to worry about scraping your boat? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, these will all be on the lake basin. Now, granted, okay. it's a shallow lake. So That's why I was wondering. Right. Yeah. So you'll see some. So the, we got these. That's the, so there's nine different structure types, 861 structures mm -hmm. in all, but nine different types. I'm going to blow through them real, here real quick. These rock rubble humps will be clearly on the basin. These are called, well, you can see what they're called, spider hump structures. They're stone and, and timber structures. There will be 40 of those. Oh, boy. Uh -oh. We have 45 of these rock star structures. And these are structures that will serve all sorts of habitat needs for fish, uh, all sorts of cover, ambush cover, food cover, uh, nesting cover, uh, breeding cover. Um, some fish species actually ambush their prey, so, uh, like black crappie, which is a popular fish species up there. So these will serve as you know, food cover as well as um, uh, protective cover. And the lake basin was pretty much devoid of much in the way of uh, habitat. Even the structures that were built in like 1971 were just essentially a handful of tires tied together. That was the technology in the day. It really is. It was pretty void of uh, you know any quality habitat. So these are post stumps. Um, there's several different features that look similar to this. These will be above water, but you know unless you're under the influence or something, you should be able to see them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and you're like paddling your boat up there, right? There's no motor, so. Right. It's, <laughs> it's electric motor, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we're going to be building seven of these rock frame deflectors that will help shore up the, uh, stabilize the shoreline, protect against wind and wave erosion. It will also be microhabitat for fish along the, um, along the shore as well as their, you know, aquatic insect food sources. And just as importantly, it's going to provide nearly 200 linear feet of pretty accessible for those that are able-bodied to be able to get out even a little closer to the water and be able to cast. So one of the big complaints at Mincy is there's limited ready access to the shoreline. We've got the two fishing piers. We've got some boat docks. There's some grassy areas along the bulkheads, but there's a lot of vegetation right up against the, the lake, and so this will provide, like I said, about 200 linear feet of folks being able to walk out on these rocks and cast as far as that as far out into the lake as they can. Okay, uh, two more different kinds of uh, post structures. 
And then in addition to those 661 large-scale structures, we're going to be building 210 small-scale structures. So these structures will be built by volunteers, mostly youth and scout groups. We're going to be building 200 of these. These are called porcupine cribs, and they um, serve as cover for young fish, young fry, to hide in there and to uh, seek shelter from, from prey species. These will be built outside the lake basin with hand tools under the supervision of fish and boat and, and other adults. And then in the, exa in the example of the, the porcupine cribs, they will then be submerged into the lake after it's refilled. And the fish and boat has GPS and um, marked each one of the spots for all of these structures, the big stuff as well as these small things. So we'll know exactly where in the lake they are. And that'll be public knowledge. People will be able to you know, plug in a coordinate in their GPS and hover right above one of these structures to fish. And in addition to these 200 porcupine cribs, we're going to be building 10 turtle basking platforms. Okay. Um, there's a, a, a state threatened turtle species up there, which I'll get into in a minute, which um, does live at the lake. It's an isolated population, red-bellied turtle. Talk about that in a minute. Um, but this is specifically for them and other tur species of turtle that can crawl out onto these things and soak up the sun, which is important for their whole life cycle and metabolism. Okay, and there's a map of the lake with the various, the all 861 structures more or less uh, pinpointed in the lake. And um, we'll be producing, the Friends of Mincy Lake will be producing um, fishing uh, maps, which will be based on this, that will either most likely be for sale. That's how a lot of these organizations similar to this, like in Leeser Lake, they sell fishing maps to anglers, and they purchase those and it goes to, to, to their, uh, well, they're not friends of Leeser Lake, Leeser Lake Heritage Foundation to continue upgrading and improving the resources at their lake. Okay, and then in addition, so that's the uh, habitat piece, about $94,000 in equipment, or material rather. Uh, fish and boat will be in-kinding about $30,000 worth of um, labor, equipment, supervision. We need to come up with about ninety-five grand to buy all, this, all, this, uh, all these materials, of which we have about thirty-eight dollars uh, in pocket right now. So. In October last year, um, Gilmore and Associates consulting firm developed this site uh, improvement study for us. So this uh, study highlights about three and a half million dollars worth of capital improvements at the park, uh, focusing, as you can see on this graphic, really heavily on access, on recreational access. Um, besides a couple of handicapped parking lot spots up there, there's no access for folks in wheelchairs to get to boats or trails or fishing piers. So we're going to be really focusing on um, these recreational amenities, fishing piers, the boats. Um, they make accessible picnic tables, grills, and of course, restrooms, trail sections. So just a real quick, this is what the uh, West Shore parking lot looks like right now, the main parking lot. Okay, you can see the 200-foot fishing jetty, the parking lot. Here's a concept drawing of what that, those improvements will look like with fishing piers, you know, accessible fishing piers and kayak launches um, off the uh, off the fishing jetty. There'll be a couple of pavilions there, more parking space, handicap access, uh, trails and restrooms, um, uh, improving all the picnic tables. I don't know, has anybody here not been to Mincy Lake ever? Um, it's pretty dated. I mean, the equipment mm -hmm. that's there, all the park fixtures are probably put there like in about 1975. I don't think there's been much, <laughs> any improvements, maybe some paint since then, but it's pretty dated. Um, so we're going to make serious improvements to all the recreational amenities up there. Okay, and likewise, this is the East Shore parking lot, the, the far side of the lake, what it looks like now, and with the envisioned improvements. A lot more parking with the access to trailheads right down on the drive as you come down into the parking lot. Again, another pavilion, restrooms, um, improved signage, uh, improved access to trails, etc. And then that fishing jetty on the south shore, kind of like in the southwest corner of the park. That's what it looks like now. And again, with envisioned improvements, having an accessible uh, fishing pier at the end of it, um, improved picnic and picnicking facilities, um, sort of creating more of a, a network of trails than just the dam breast itself, improved uh, picnicking facilities. Okay, so just real quick, again, there's the $94,370 is about what we need for all the materials for those 861 uh, habitat structures. Some examples of some of the other big ticket items. We're going to, for the first time in the 50-year in the history of the lake, 
have a bridge that will span the new spillway. There's never been one, so you've never been able to actually walk around the entire lake. So we're going to um, remedy that by installing a pedestrian bridge that will indeed make it an entire loop hike around the lake. That's 150,000. Uh, kayak, uh, the accessible kayak launch is 50,000. We may have one or two of those, depending on how this plan plays out. Uh, accessible fishing pier, 54.5, may have two of those as well, one on the west shore and perhaps one on that south shore jetty. Uh, picnic tables, the accessible picnic tables where folks in a wheelchair can actually hang with a family or friends, not have to necessarily be on an end, but can be in the center of the tables. Um, you know, the kind of pricey, 1150 a piece. Uh, they make accessible grills today. We'll be purchasing, the, purchasing those as well, installing those. And restrooms. There is a, There are two restrooms there on either shore, the east and west shore, you know, a men and women's room, a restroom. They have been closed up and out of commission for, I think, at least two years, maybe three. I mean, they're unfixable. So there's, um, right now there's a porta potty that's on either shore, but we don't have any permanent um, toilet uh, facilities there. Okay, we're about, we being Friends of Mincy Lake, are about to launch our capital campaign approaching foundations, corporations, individuals to fund this thing. So uh, the, the eight pages, four on either side of the middle panel there, um, are where? They're here. And I can uh, give each of you guys one of these. These are our marketing booklet. Uh, eight pages. Yeah, you can pass one of those out to everybody. So this booklet, along with a solicitation letter, is about ready to go. We're going to first target. Been working with um, Frank Brooks and DCED, and he's identified 26 foundations here in Northampton County and just outside the county um, that have charitable assets between five and ten million. So we're going to approach each of those 26 and ask for. I believe we decided we're going to ask for a $50,000 one-time donation from each of those um, bigger foundations. And then, you know, we've, al we've already been on the road, we being, again, the Friends of Mincy Lake Committee, going to sportsmen's clubs, pitching the projects, soliciting donations, and there'll be a lot more of that uh, as, you know, throughout the course of this winter. Okay, we're modeling at least our recreation of the ADA recreational facilities and habitat uh, structures after the Leeser Lake project, which some of you gentlemen, some of the gentlemen here have been uh, out there to see that, and others may have visited on their own. Um, they have this board, this donor board, that recognizes the big ticket donors. We're going to do a very similar thing. Um, fortunately, we have Mike Ortoski. He's the editor of Blue Valley Times, the owner of that newspaper and a graphic artist. So he's been handy on our uh, team, helping us design um, concepts, our logo, et cetera. So building up to um, uh, the draw down of the lake, we worked with Fish and Boat Commission between April and June doing a turtle rescue. I know it sounds kind of silly, but it is what it is. We, uh, because of that red-bellied turtle, it's a state, uh, state in danger, a state threatened species, it triggered through the feds this turtle salvage operation. If there were no endangered turtle species there, it wouldn't have happened. Um, but we had, I think, 36 or 38 uh, turtle traps all along the lake. You can see in that one graphic there with the, the green dots. Um, Fish and boat captured. I think about 180 turtles of five or six different species. Um, it's just uh, one of the biologists out there where you can see what these traps look like. There's a painted turtle, a pretty common turtle. Found a bunch of those. It's probably the most common turtle pulled out of the lake. But it's this guy here that triggered this whole nonsense. Um, this uh, state-threatened red-bellied turtle. Uh, fish and boat estimates there's about a dozen living there. It's this very disjunct, isolated population from other populations in the southeast. So it's a pretty uh, significant, you know, isolated uh, group that we have there that we'd like to to see remain there, they were able to catch um, three, <laughs> three of these turtles. And two of the larger ones were radio, uh, well not radio collared, but outfitted with transmitters and then released on a private pond just upstream of the lake. The game plan being that when the lake is refilled in a few years, they will attempt to recapture these um, turtles, you know, they'll be able to find out where they are with their receivers and uh, relocate them back to Mincy. Likewise, um, the 180, their plan ideally is to relocate, re-relocate 180 turtles back to the lake. Um, these two, they have transmitters on, the others, you know, they'll just grab, hopefully, at least Bangor Dam is where most of the turtles went, with the exception of these endangered, uh, these threatened species went to a little pond just adjacent to, uh, to Mincy. 
Where, where do you think the other nine went? Like, do you think just stayed in the area? Um, yeah, probably. I, I'm sure they're there somewhere, and I'm sure there are many, many, many dozens, if not hundreds, of other turtles that just you know sunk down into the mud or hit what hit wherever turtles hide when people are trying to catch them. <laughs> And of course, the big thing was the fish salvage. So the turtle um, salvage operation lasted several months. The fish rescue was two days um, and just a few hours each day. But it was pretty. It was pretty exciting. There was probably a hundred people up there. A lot of media. I'm sure some of you guys saw it on the, in the media. But they captured. They being fish and boat netted about 5,000 pounds of fish out of the lake, including some big ones. And it's a pretty big uh, rainbow trout there. Some big bass were pulled out of the lake, eight, some, there were some that folks thought might be pushing nine pounds. All of these fish were relocated to Beltsville um, Lake in Carbon County, and I believe East Bangor Dam as well during the second day. And I thought it'd be just fun to show you some of the other things we found, some of the uh, artifacts in the lake after it was drained. We found one canoe in the mud, <laughs> owned by the Temple Owls, I guess, in Philly. We found one loaded shotgun <laughs> on the lake, which we assume um, a duck hunter inadvertently dropped into the lake while duck hunting. Found lots of batteries, because it is, um, you know, it is an electric motor um, facility, lakes. We found batteries, dozens of anchors. Um, I don't know, I might go, we have, yeah, dozens of anchor, uh, anchors, um, hundreds of lures, uh, fishing poles, picnic table, lots of shoes, sneakers, flip-flops. So that's uh, pretty much where we're at with Mincy at this point. Um, I can move on to two other, two or three other quick projects if anybody has any questions it, about Mincy first. Yeah, just real quick about the uh, potential funding from, I know Mario's office was looking at some, some stuff. Scavello, where we're at with that, or right. So some of the sources that we will target when those grant rounds open um, are, of course, the DC and our growing greener funds, um, the uh, gaming. Uh, I forget what that program is called. The LSA, the LSA yeah. right? Yeah. The local share account. Yep. Um, we should be able to get some big dollars out of that. Mario's office worked with us to put an application together. The cycle it was it's a brief window. It was open for a bunch of weeks back late summer, early fall. We just didn't have enough meat okay. to put together a competitive application at this point. We didn't have any concept drawings at that point. And they really want to see, from what I understand, this, maybe you guys are a little more familiar with how this LSA program works, but they do want to see pretty much a shovel-ready project, and we're not, yeah. we, we weren't there yet. You think next year? Yeah, we, next we, year we, for yeah. sure. Yeah. On the LSA funding, the, um, again, DCNR fundings, we did get 30000 through the Reservoir Fisheries Habitat Partnership. That was specifically for the, um, and that's U.S. Fish and Wildlife dollars. That's funneled through, I guess it must be, this, is, this fisheries group must be their like, community outreach organization. There were only three, there was 11 applications submitted. It's nationwide, and only three of them were um, funded in full. 30000 was the max you can ask for. So we got, we were one of them, another lake in Pennsylvania Highlands, and then a lake in Kentucky also received 30000 So we were pretty excited about that. I know you're still working on but do you remember roughly how much of the municipal park grants? I'll get to it in a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But we have, if all of them get approved, we'll have about 416000 Okay, and then moving from lakes to meadows. So um, this is a photograph of a meadow on public land owned by Bushkill Township. It's called the Ballast Track. It's now part of the municipal park system. Um, it's at the corners of Jacobsburg and Cromer Roads, just south of Wingap a little bit. Um, forget how big this meadow is. About 90 acres. Yeah. This is actually one of the, um, we actually helped fund the preservation of this land. And then what you see at the meadow and the trail around it. So meadows have been long been in, in kind of our, again, seeing more emphasis through conservation organizations, DCNR, DEP, uh, Lehigh Valley Greenways, as conservation best management practices um, to, you know, obviously there's the visual for park uh, goers, but there's also a huge benefit for pollinator insects, honeybees, et cetera, which have taken a hit. We've all seen that in the news the last bunch of years. So it helps with those pollinators that we rely on for food and pleasure. Um, pollinating and you know uh, flowers and making the next generation. Um, they're also incredible for uh, water quality. 
and for so improving soil health. Uh, the roots of native plants, and we're talking native, you know, North American native plants, not necessarily things you import, you know, that you would grow out, out back in your yard. These things have these incredible root systems that can be six, eight, and ten feet long. So they, they're long-lived. Um, it takes them a while to reach uh, maturity because uh, they spend the first bunch of years, you know, shooting those roots deep into the ground. But they, they tend to grow very thick and over time will crowd out the perennial cool season weeds and grasses. Um, so we've looked at Louise Moore Park. Got a lot of turf there at the park. We've identified three sites for meadows. Um, the first one, the biggest one, is what we call the seven acre meadow. Uh, that's in that seven acre, right now it's a, a, a very poor quality hay field that sits right to the south in front of the uh, Louise Moore farmhouse. Um, it is right now mowed twice a year uh, by a local farmer who, if the hay is decent, feeds it to his beef cattle. If it's not, he sells it to uh, one of the um, mushroom farms for hay mulch. So we would love to convert that into a, a wildflower, whether it's a wildflower meadow or a warm season grass meadow, some kind of a natural um, uh, conservation practice with some trails through it. Uh, to do just improve the quality of the, the soil there as, as, as well as just the visual aesthetic. It's pretty much a, a ready looking field otherwise. And then in the northwest corner, in the upper left corner, we've got an acre meadow uh, that we could do. That's actually, it's kind of that brown triangular-ish looking uh, feature is uh, a stormwater basin that uh, is right now mowed pretty regularly by our park staff but it would be an ideal place to convert into a wet meadow. So we would seed that with native um, wetland plants, the seeds, and maintain it as such. I've been consulting with uh, Penn State Extension and a uh, prairie nursery, which is a, uh, a prairie and meadow um, organization in Wisconsin that specializes in this kind of thing, and they have a lot of clients on the East Coast. So I've been uh, working with them on coming up with some plans. What we've decided to do is the one-third acre meadow that you can see, hopefully you can see. Uh, that'll be the first one that we're gonna tackle. It's small, um, it's, it'll be much more manageable as a, a first tackle, so I put together a scope of work. It came up kind of crappy. <laughs> but um, it's a four year long <laughs> scope of work to convert that turf grass, that one third acre, about 13,500 square feet, into a wildflower meadow. Heavy on the flowers, lighter on the grasses, since it's right in a park next to our interior trail system. Um, it will also serve as a, um, a model demonstration model, a model demonstration wildflower meadow for the public with interpretive signage, educational signage on the values of wildflower meadows, how you can install them, maintain them, prepare for them, et cetera. So that's the uh, site right there in yellow highlight. The three brown, horizontal brown strips over the last bunch of years our park staff have planted. They're, they're each about 117 feet long, I think, by seven feet wide and their annual sunflower strips. So um, talking with Gordy and others, uh, got the green light to essentially square off those three strips into this third of an acre and uh, no longer plant sunflowers there but convert the site into a wildflower meadow. So the process is, is fairly long. We already retreated this with the glyphosate Roundup um, last month to kill the existing vegetation. We will apply Roundup again three times next year to kill, again, the perennial grasses and weeds, and then do a fall planting in September. So we'll plant, we'll seed it in September, and then probably be two years before, maybe even three, before there's going to be flowers actually produced on these uh, growing plants. But in the end, it, it, I, I'm hopeful it'll be a great investment and it'll be aesthetically pleasing, it'll be an educational resource. Working with Penn State Extension, they have a whole pollinator program. Um, so uh, hoping it's going to be a, a terrific recreational and conservation you know, practice there at the park. Uh, that's obviously a very tiny little uh, wildflower meadow, but to give you an example, the kind of educational signage um, you know, function that uh, a demonstration site like this might provide. Okay, now we're back to water. So this is down at Fry's Run Park. I guess, any questions on the meadow before we 
kind of move along. That meadow project will co is about $2,800 between uh, prep work and seeding and stabilization. Um, and between Brian's funding and Park's funding, I'm, we're hopeful that we'll be able to have that. And if I need to go after grant monies for it, we can do that as well. But we should have the funding in hand for, for that third acre meadow next fall for planting, which is when most of the expenses are right at the, the planting and stabilization end of it. This is Fry's Run down at Fry's Run County Park. A couple of years ago, I've been with County Parks now for two, two and a half, but I was with the Conservation District for seven prior to that. And I worked with Gordy and his staff at Fry's Run to turn these highly eroded stream banks at the park from that to that, and from that to that. And then after we were done stabilizing the stream bank with heavy equipment and lots of volunteers, and that was all grant funded through the Coldwater Heritage Partnership Fund, which I believe is mostly DCNR and fish and boat dollars. No county dollars was, were invested in it. A lot of in-kind um, work from county folks, but no dollars. After we stabilized the bank, peeled it back, stabilized it, we did a bunch of plantings. We planted, I think, just over 200 trees along about a 400 linear stretch of creek. This was done on Earth Day in 2015. This was the, uh, the educational sign for the buffer, acknowledging all the donors and partners. That's what it looked like. The yellow flags in the back of the trees that we had just planted, we flagged them so we knew where they were um, when parks maintenance staff comes down to, to maintain the lawn. And then this past year, several, a bunch of those died, as you're going to expect natural mortality from something like that. I think we lost about 20, and we replanted 20 more, um, replaced those 20 with funding we received. Um, actually, Wildlands Conservancy applied for um, DCNR funding to maintain and or establish eight different buffers throughout the county, might even been Lehigh County too. And Fry's Run was one of their maintenance sites. I, I encourage them to include that, where all we did was replace the 20 trees that we lost to um, drought or deer rubs or, or what have you. So that was the sign that was installed. Again, that's 2015. Two years later, we got a really nice buffer going there. You can see this was just taken this summer, and those trees have really done well um, in doing their, their buffer thing, keeping a uh, you know, non-point source runoff out of the stream. Oh, and I should also mention that in addition to that planting that we did this year, we also planted in, I believe, Brian, uh, that funding may have all come from you, uh, Louise Moore. Yeah. So we lost uh, 45 evergreens at Louise Moore back in Superstorm Sandy in 2012, mostly the wind and sound screen, or sound and sight screen, I guess, along Route 33. I mean, those were big, mature trees. Of course, we're not planting 100-foot spruces, but we did replace those 45 trees with 45, seven and eight foot tall spruces, um, 15 of which we lost already um, to a, a fungus, a needle cast, and uh, they will be replaced at no charge by Northern Nurseries, which was our vendor for the uh, trees next spring. Uh, all of his stock were infected with the same fungus, so they're gonna make good on that. We'll replace the, the uh, blues. It was all Colorado blue spruces that were affected by this needle cast fungus. We had two other species, con uh, Mm, I forget now what they were, but uh, they were fine. And according to Penn State Extension, they're pretty um, immune or tough against this fungus, so they, sh they should be fine. And then wrapping it up with some uh, recreational uh, programming that we did. This was the first year that the county contracted with Wildlands Conservancy for both some ecological restoration work as well as um, helping Parks and Rec with its uh, outreach, it's community recreation programming, and they did an amazing job. Um, they scheduled, typically in a year I, I'll do some, pretty much just a one-person show as far as the outdoor rec connection goes with parks. We've got a great maintenance staff, probably nearly two dozen, but or really just one program operator, that's me, so I can only do so many programs. These guys, typically I'll do between six and ten a year. Um, Wildlands coordinated and delivered 38 programs this year. This is a picture of, yeah, it's down at Wyatuck Park. They were all at our county parks for the most part. Um, everything from wintertime snowshoeing, introducing families to snowshoeing. We had nine day camps at three different parks. Here's a picture of a bunch of kids hanging out, exploring uh, Catasauqua Creek at um, Wingrove Park. Um, 
at a uh, education and conservation workshop there, um, building bat boxes. This was back in the summer. Um, had you know, families came out, built. Uh, I think we built ten bat boxes, and they are now hung in place in three or four of our county parks. Had a family introduction to how to uh, do. Um, uh, oh boy. Yeah. Um, Dutch oven cooking. There you go. Dutch oven cooking. So introducing kids and families how to do Dutch oven cooking. Uh, and then we had a couple of salamander walks up at uh, Mincy Lake early in the spring. And uh, here's little two little guys all excited to have found, uh, I think it was a red back salamander. So um, it's been a terrific partnership. There was a, over, let's see, I think they had just over 500 people were reached through this programming with uh, Wildlands this year. And we still have two more programs to go in November. They have, uh, they did some You and Me programs for little kids two to five with an adult. And then they had the day camps for kids eight to 14, I believe. And then there was a number of programs for families, bicycling programs, um, introduction to fishing programs, et cetera. So it was, a, it was a terrific partnership and I look forward to working with them again. And that is it. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff. Not yet, but they secured an easement to get to the PPL trail, which is about 100 yards away. Yeah. Um, so they're waiting for, they're going to put this township's going to do construction on that. Hopefully, in the, I guess. Spring, um, and then that trail, you know, runs from 512 down into the northern portion of Jacobs area. Is that called the PPL trail? Yeah, Bushkill PPL trail. Okay. So that this problem road uh, Jacobs Park connect into that PPL trail. Yes, they just secured the easement uh, a little bit ago on that to get that connection in between. Any questions? Right. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. All right, thank you. <coughs> yeah, I have some uh, How many money do you need? Eight? So I'll do that. There's more out there. So yeah. I don't know. I'll have to back at the office. If they're not here, they're not getting one. Yeah. Oh, well. Before we get started, let me pass. Charlie, see if we're going to time. This is the new no. part that shows no. Good. all of the existing, what has been funded, what needs to be funded. There's 11 grants that came in in September. <coughs> and what the remaining total would be if all of those are approved. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, actually, I need to get on it real quick. Here. And not to jump ahead with passing that out, but uh, to keep in with the agenda here, uh, I'm going to go to the Hellertown Trail Signage Project. Um, the borough received a CDBG grant, um, I believe in 2016. 2015, um, and it was to make a, another pedestrian connection from one of the uh, neighborhoods to the uh, Saucon Rail Trail that exists now. Um, talking with the DCD, Frank Books, that runs the CDBG program and the borough, they were looking for a few extra funds uh, due to construction overrun costs and uh, some signage that they wanted to do. So with the, some of the regional trail projects we've been funding with the Act 13 funds, uh, I thought it would be a, a great opportunity to do some of these things in the same way that uh, the Walnutport and uh, Sladington are doing signage in their trails and, and building trail towns and getting. So what this really does is get people from the existing trail and show them du uh, directions where the main street is, where the downtown businesses are, and to and from the downtown to the trail. They have designs for their, um, so this one would be on the trail here. 
and you can see the green dots where they are located throughout the burrow. And then if you're on the trail itself, they would put these signs on it. Do, do any of these local businesses support or, or, oh, or, 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 or very heavily, con con yes. contribute in, in, into these signages that, that would bring you know, people? As cash funds? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I shouldn't say I don't, I'm, I'm not positive if they do, but I know the businesses are very supportive of the trail. They have, um, they've moved the farmer's market to Water Street Park, which was another one of our municipal park projects that we helped fund to renovate. Um, I'm sure the chamber does some type of funding, but I'm not sure exactly what or how much they've put towards um, things like that. Any of your funds that we have in the account? Or, or yes, in the budget, we have. Yep, yep. And this would come out of the Act 13. I know. I know, and you know, we keep building extensions onto the trail, so like, where do we start? The Norbath, I think we're actually going to start. We're going to start from the DNL and work inwards. Um, but with this one, this one, we still need that connection in between the Salkin, or from the Salkin to the South Bethlehem Greenway. Um, we need that acquisition that's part of Norfolk Southern, um, or at least to get us into Salkin Park. And then from here down, it's almost complete to Coopersburg, and then they're trying to extend from Coopersburg to get to Quakertown. So it's kind of that, like, where do we mark them, and do we put the funds in to put markers up right away? Um, yeah, so I, I think eventually, I, yeah, we will. I, I wonder if, I mean, you, you wouldn't necessarily mark it if you put, just say, a, a, a red spike or, 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 you know, red pole every quarter of a mile. Right. You just have to know, you know, where you were, and you wouldn't worry about changing signage down the road, you know. One thing that we'll be doing if we get the grant from DCNR um, for the Norbath improvements for the existing portion that is, is there now is um, something that the Plainfield Township Trail does. They put the road Street. intersections, uh, and that's a lot more helpful than kind of mileage. Yeah. Well, well they had yeah. the Boy Scout signs there that, 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 that go in. The, right. And, and they're numbered the distance. The Boy Scouts put the mileage up on there. When you get up to the road, you're, you actually can then figure out, okay, this is Johnsonville Road or yeah, this is wherever yeah. else. And if you're looking on a map, I'm very map heavy. I look at maps all the time. So it, when I'm on the trail, like I, I can picture it then. So I think that's something that we'll start doing a lot more on all of our trail systems. But mile markers will definitely be out and about. My dog likes that trail, that Plainfield Trail. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need an acquisition from Norfolk Southern. There's about, as I, I've probably said many times, that LVP study from 2013, there was 10 gaps, six were identified in, Nor in Northampton County, and <laughs> the majority of them probably Norfolk Southern acquisition. We've, uh, through the Lea Valley Greenways Coalition, working with DNL, working with Wildlands Conservancy, and the Lea Valley Planning Commission, have been trying to get a hold of Norfolk Southern we have that TAP grant that we received in 2015 for the construction of the um, Two Rivers Gap 9A that will connect to the southern portion of Jacobsburg to the Stockertown and Plainfield Trail, that we have $425,000 sitting there for construction. It's in permanent right now, but once that's done, we can go. But we need about three acres of Norfolk Southern land that has no railroad in it. So we were hoping to use that one as kind of like the feeder to get the ball rolling at least. And it just keeps stalling, and they don't return phone calls for six months. And so that is the biggest thing right now. I mean, we've actually gone back, and especially with the, the stalking to South Bethlehem, um, Darlene Heller, myself, and Chris Stoller from Wildlands went down and actually kind of looked at a reroute. So starting from where they're going to be ending at Auburn Street, which is pretty much in line with the pool, um, bringing it in through the park now, instead of trying to run straight down that existing rail line that runs to where they have the concrete recycling plant just below Wendy's and the park and ride. Yeah. Um, if we can run it through the park and get under 78 and use a switchback to get up to 78, and then we only need about an acre or two of Norfolk Southern land instead of 9 or 10. It cuts costs. It does, they don't have really anything using that because at that other end is the Salkin Rail Trail already owned by the Barrow of Hallertown. So we're trying to cut down as much as possible. 
And I mean, it, it helps our costs um, stay down for acquisition that we could put more towards construction. But it's just trying to get Norfolk Southern on board with moving forward. I mean, using some of my connections with like the 911 trail, um, we've they've had success with CSX out in Pittsburgh. They've donated a portion of it from Flight 93 out to the Great Allegheny Passage. It's it's just an, a moving cycle, and we're trying to lock it down. So I mean, there's there's many many of us working on it, and we thought bringing it together as a Leah Valley regional wide program and running it through the Planning Commission would be kind of like the best. I mean, it, it's even at the state, um, PennDOT and DCNR are having a little problems getting it through too. Uh, um, they just they don't want anything to do with trails. Um, except in some areas, they've been a little bit more uh, helpful. I mean, the East Coast Greenway, um, the Schuylkill River Trail down in Philadelphia, a great example, the one that they put that walkway out into the river, like right in downtown Philly there, that thing took like eight years until they could actually get one bridge crossing, pedestrian bridge crossing, to get from the downtown area to the other area, like in the river. So... I mean, we have grants literally that are tied up, and we need that to move, or we could possibly lose a portion of that. But I think we're secure with at least getting it from Jacobsburg down to um, Filetown Road, and that's half the cost at least. But like I said, I mean, we have to have that out to bid by the end of 2018. Um, so I know it's a year away, but I'm starting to panic a little bit here, and um, I. I I don't know what else to do except keep working the angles that we've been in. So, yeah, those are some of the major things, and that's why some of these gaps are, are gaps yet. So the Hellertown one, I think it's a great opportunity that we can, and, and you know, as we build these trails, we're going to start seeing that we're going to need more of these signage things. Um, this is another pedestrian connection from a neighborhood, as I said, and they're looking at um, up to $21,000, um, a grant to complete that pedestrian connection and do this signage, which they can most likely easily have done by spring. Right in time for most people to get back out on the trail in the farmer's market. And, but the Hellertown to South Bethlehem, that's definitely one of ones that I keep hearing um, people wanting to do. Um, anybody have any questions on this? Or? Are we going to talk about the uh, the department that's going to talk about the actual resolution? What's that? Where are we going to talk about the resolution? Yeah, right, yep. there is. Yes. Yeah. So, do you have any questions on it, the, the 21,000? Do you have a question on the resolution? Yeah, uh, uh. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay. So recommendation to approve for tonight, yep. Okay. Right. Move on to the uh, the next one here. Sure, the, the, the two amendments to the resolutions, the last time I was here I asked how we wanted to do this. Um, so what Jim showed was um, we used the same consultant that's doing the Northern Tier Trail. Um, they did quick renderings and cost estimates for those renderings that you saw at Lake Mincy. We kind of made them in the trailhead areas. It was along the lines since Mincy is a major component of the Northern Tier area. Um, so they did that work and we needed to make an amendment to the contract and the resolution for the funds um, as an addition of $4,500.
this was to do the renderings and the cost estimates that we can, instead of taking a whole nother amount of time, putting it out to bid for cost estimates on that, we got that done fairly quickly. It, uh, yeah, and all the items in it. Like and all the items in it. Those four that he showed, the before and what they could be, they developed those concept plans, did a cost estimate with that trail on both ends having trailhead components, restrooms, new parking, all of that. And since it was part of the Northern Tier Trail anyway, we thought it would just be an easy fit to put that right into that okay. and get those things done quickly. Because we thought at the time we were going to go for one of those Monroe LSA grants. Yeah. And it just got to the point where we didn't have enough. Those grants are um, a year-long process or a year-long um, they need to be completed by. Yeah. We're not going to have most of that done within the first year. And then, so you're pretty confident that we'll be able to do something for next year. I'm very confident. We're starting out, we should start with a DCNR grant, and we can even we've talked a little bit internally about putting some money away for um, as county grants to do as the seed money, um, le like let this 501c3 keep going and yeah. doing fundraising. I mean, they're up to thirty, almost forty thousand dollars already. Yeah. But if we can put some county money towards the project for seed money as a DCNR grant, um, DEP grants, the DCD at the state level through the Recreation Parks grants, um, the LSA, we can use that to keep snowballing and that three and a half million becomes and, and, a lot and, shorter. And the LSA for next year, if we apply for something, we'll there's, be there's, a lot more, there's still plenty of time yes, for definitely. projects before they put right. And we can, we can start pigeonholing holding money um, for those grants. So like, let's say we took county money and we went for a DCNR grant for maybe like the West Shore parking lot that has all those ADA accessible projects. We can use portion of that um, the way we would write the grant to match LSA money and then that might do like the bridge uh, connecting both parking lots. Um, so there's things that we can write an overall scope of work and then use some of those monies in each of those grants to match other grants and keep it moving. Now in the, 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 all the projects listed in that, the three and a half million, mm -hmm. Are, are they listed in order of priority? No, you, I think you know, we just kind of, we wanted, it was, like I said, it was, yeah. let's get our ideas in. It went to the committee for their review, their comments, uh, and then we added them all together. Um, we could really sit down now over the winter and focus on what we really want to do first. And, and Yeah, I, and I mean, I'll see, I think great, and, if, if we can do it all and, and sure. you know, of course, prioritize, you know, what needs to be done and also what needs to be done while it's down. You know, right. some of stuff could right. be done later. Uh, but just in case, obviously, we don't reach all, all, all the funding, sure. uh, uh, we're not skipping over. that. The concept, I mean, that could be a three or it could be a 10-year, mm -hmm. I mean, build out. That's like total, like, best wishes. We said, like, let's throw everything at it. Yeah, yeah, and then see what we can actually do. And, and, I mean, I'd rather go that way than kind of, okay, maybe we could maybe we could do this one here. Like, so let's add it. And yeah. two years later, no, let's kind of, like, all agree on one thing. So when they go out to do fundraising, if they need, if they get ten grand to do picnic tables throughout the area, that's great. That's things that we can Check mark off. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was one of the best ways to go forward with that one. Okay. All right. Well, any, any questions? Sorry, we kind of jumped around a little bit there. Uh, on yeah, uh, sorry. this one forward, council additional forty five hundred. And then both two and or yeah, sorry, three and four are pretty much the same. They're just the one was the resolution um, for the funds. To be committed, one was for the actual contractual Spending services by Gilmore. Any questions on? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, discuss the municipal park grant. Sure. So, um, as we've mentioned in the, in the past, um, the program came to an end in September. Here, um, as I passed out, we have. Approximate, well, I mean, you can see it down to the penny. It's four thousand four hundred sixteen thousand nine hundred thirteen and seventy cents. Um, do, you, do you have recommendations on that? I, I think we've discussed, and I personally, I, I know we talked about you know larger, you know, county parks and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I, I definitely think, if not all of it, you know, we, we should definitely consider moving some over to Mincy Lake while it's down. I mean, this is an opportunity to, to work on it. You know, we may not have in, in right. three, five years, ten years on the road. Um, so, open to suggestions or anything. But I, I personally would be happy moving some of this and, and even future money into a mincy dedicated part of open space and, and, and the parks. So. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm, we were just suggesting that it gets moved to OSI County Parks from OSI Muni Parks. And if you want line item, like, specifically to it, I thought that was during clapping because I was actually saying it correctly. <laughs> So, I mean, for the past five years, OSI was getting, the municipal parks was getting a million each. Not much, if any, was going to the county parks. Um, I've been working with Gordy, and we actually, we, we've come up with a list that can get some things done, new safety improvements, new fencing um, in most of the parks that we can literally do quickly in 2018 with these funds. And so I guess, I mean, if we just move this all over to the, the, the then we can, county and you can still pull out of that sure. for the Mincy Lake then yeah. as needed. Yeah. No, I, I agree, yeah. What do you think, John? Well, I guess my question is, the I always get into this, the mechanics of we need to do a budget amendment Correct. then in order to accomplish this. And then we do this now because, right, no, this is 27, what, what about the, the 416 now because it was allocated for this and now it's not spent? Well, Duran is here. Maybe he can answer that for us. <laughs> I know why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are early. <laughs> what, what, what you can do is when you present your amendments for the 2018 budget and we have a finalized number of what will remain in the municipal parks, you can amend the 18 budget to reflect the transfer out of Municipal Listen. parks into county parks so that the funding would be there the first of the year for you. Okay. We want to we want to transfer the we need a 2018 budget amendment to transfer out of OSI Muni Parks right. to OSI County, County Park. Right. And once we can identify fairly close, I mean we're not going to get to the exact dollar. Mm -hmm. We can get fairly close to what's remaining commitment for. The municipal parks. Once you consider the this last round, yeah. we when, just when do we need that that number, Linda or, or John? For uh, three weeks. <laughs> December. So, there's uh, if we had it on December six, or do we need it before then? For uh, well, we can have it before then. Yeah. Before <clears throat> then before. So you got that, bro? Let me let me just enlighten you a little. <laughs> Nobody gets it to the exact number. But when we close the books, and we close the books for 2017, mm -hmm. and we see that, okay, we were off by $3,000, I'm just using a number. We adjust that as we roll forward the balances from 17 to 8. That's so, a Scribner's error. Mm -hmm. So if you get close when you amend the budget for 18, mm -hmm. and we close the books for 17, and bring, roll forward into 18, it will be the exact number. Okay. Okay? Well, I... Uh, I don't want to say that because you're recording. But. So, I, I mean, I guess the number that, what would be a safe number based on what we have here? We have four sixteen, nine thirteen seventy. I mean, well, no four, one could use no one could use more than that, right? No Correct. one. So the, that that's a is minimum. what was brought in, um, applied for, and what they can actually be granted. So that is the total number. So at the next meeting, if we do it at the next meeting. Will be, um, well, I'm just saying, so these missile parks can't go over what they're requesting. Yeah, so I guess yeah, my question correct. is, would 415 that be a nice be, round number? Yes. Okay, so yeah. that's what I'm going to propose. Okay. I, I so I, I, I think, uh, Linda, you got this. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want um, a 2018 budget amendment that would transfer uh, 415000 out of OSI Municipal. Muni Parks to... OSI County Parks. I like it. I, I think that, yeah. And then I think that's round up, and then if there's a $1,000 or 1900 you know, Duran can work his magic. Right. Now, my question is, and Duran, do we need to do anything with the <laughs> actual ordinance? Do we need to amend any of that ordinance or pass a resolution stating that that's Passing or so it'll no. become okay. part of the budget. Okay, right. I just wanted to ask about that. When they adopt the 2018 budget, by all there's a resolution that encompasses all the amendments okay. that council and the administration propose. So, 
and, and if if as these grants close out, would that just go back into the Muni Park Fund? Or well, I think it might be, we want to state that publicly in the, in the meeting so it's part of the minutes that, say, I'll uh, pick Bethlehem Township, got some money, and they finished their project, and $10,000 is to be returned to the county because they didn't use it. And any return funds should automatically go back into the county parks mm. and not the municipal. Okay. Yeah, or, or it wouldn't be that difficult to transfer it as part of a right. budget amendment next year. Right, okay. You know, okay. And there, that can yeah. always happen. Right, you know. right, okay. Okay? Yep. Thank you. Yep. But, but I, I think 415 will be a good start for you for next yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I think, that's, I think that's good. And this is, uh, so fortunately, I, I moved out of Wingap, which I see never used <laughs> their funds, which was something that, that I pushed but before I was even on council and, and I was on the Wingate Park Board. I was trying to push the uh, yeah, I know. The, the borough to come up with, and it was just infighting between the park board and, and the uh, the town borough of, of who was going to put something together. I they was couldn't talking, agree, so no one did anything. I was talking to their consultant that was doing actually the master site plan for, <laughs> for the park itself, and he was trying to push them along to use some of this money. Yeah. I mean, over the past five years, I've held four grant workshops. We've sent correspondence out to both each manager and um, either supervisors or councils or whoever, um, stating that you have this money, you have this time to do it. Um, I, it I don't know. Yeah, no, they, said they, they knew about it when I was on the park board yeah. before on council. And, and Yeah, I mean, while we're picking on municipalities, Wilson Borough left a hundred and. Fifteen thousand nine hundred forty-one dollars on the table. They did one grant in the very beginning in 2013, and they haven't done anything since. Now, what do you think the reason is that, that these? I don't know because um, I, I I'm sure a concern was matching funds. Yeah. But I've true. stated a lot of the times that in-kind services by that borough can be used as match. It doesn't have to be all cash match. I. We, we had this conversation it, again when, when I was at Wingap, and and they wanted to put up a. a, a scoreboard sign over mm -hmm. by the, the, the baseball and soccer field over there and the soccer field wanted to do some things. The soccer, now, the borough didn't want to concede the, to the Wing Gap Athletic Association, even though the Wing Gap was, was going to donate all the late time and labor to be the matching funds to it, and so nothing got done. So it's, 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 it's annoying. Yeah, uh, or, I mean, even, so you'll see this at the, at the next one when we do the grants, but like West Easton Borough, they actually submitted them for projects that they've completed in the last four and a half years. So they can actually be reimbursed for that. Oh, yeah. mm. I, I mean, it's, there, there was ways to get this money. And it was written in the ordinance that they could, they could get the, anything that was done from March 2013 up to that September of this year, they could um, retroactively get reimbursed. And... I see my, my new township of Plainfield Township left seven dollars and eighty six cents behind. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, the the other and the other question I had was um, Lower Nazareth left ninety five thousand. Lower Nazareth still has a two thousand and nine phase one grant out. Oh, did we send that one? Is that the one? Is it? No, that was Palmer. Palmer, Palmer one, yeah, because that was part of the whole Shrin development that. If yeah. Twenty two. Wasn't, it it. wasn't there one in Nazareth we extended that? Okay, so there, there was a few Nazareth Borough projects. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The swimming pool was a nightmare. Yeah, that was a phase one that started it, and then it, they did a couple other projects in there. Mm. Yeah. But I think we're at around like 58 or 60 projects, not with including the ones that we still have to approve. So, I mean, it was a pretty successful program yeah. in my eyes. Okay. Well, I guess a little bit behind for other parks. That's fine. Yeah. What time is it? Okay. All right. So I guess uh, is, is, any other questions on municipal parks? Uh, so I guess we'll, eight open space program updates. Yeah, just give you a quick update on some things. Um, I talked to Lower Mount Bethel. Um, they are hopeful for an agreement of sale on that Tekkenin Trails project. Um, it's a mile and a half of Delaware River waterfront and about 175 acres that would hopefully be acquired by the um, township. Um, just adjacent to where their <coughs> environmental ed center is. Mm -hmm. 
once again, them, like us, are waiting on the state budget to get passed um, about some of the grants that we have out. So we have over $400,000 worth of grants. Um, if they get approved, there'll be uh, some projects that we can do in 2018. Um, we, uh, with partnerships and me working with the National Park Service on a bunch of different topics, um, they granted us $50,000 for planning and engineering on the Liberty Water Gap Trail, which extends from Portland up to uh, Point of the Gap in the park. So that'll be a, a 2018 project that we can get started with them on doing some engineering, working with PennDOT on road diets and things like that. Um, our Northern Tier project, we had our first public meeting with about 30 people in attendance up at Weona Park Community Center. Um, we have a couple, two or three different routes that are pretty much already figured. Um, the Mincy to Portland one, uh, David Dew is a council member with Upper Mount Bethel and uh, he just knows the area really well. He kind of mapped his own area and it, it actually fits in with what we're trying to do. So that would be a quick turnaround to get some signage up after that feasibility study and get that connection going from Portland up to Mincy. There's portions of it on road and not on road. Um, I'd say 60-40 off road. Um, there's some areas that we'd have to get some easements through some private property or, um, or acquire the land outright. Um, the Norbath Trail won uh, an award at the LVPC Awards in October um, for the western connector that goes down to the DNL. Um, the easements with Keystone Cement are about 99% finalized finally after about eight years. Um, <laughs> it was a little bit of a tricky thing to get done. Um, and we're in process of hiring an engineering firm to get that started from Jacksonville Road, Jacksonville Park, out to Mill Street in Bath. Um, so hopefully we can get started in that in early 2018. Um, I'm, yes, and the sewer authority, there's a bridge replacement on Stan knows much about. Um, borough, because they're actually looking at doing a possibility of connecting it to the park and then the school as an addition right there. Um, but our main focus is just to get it to Mill Street, and then we can work with them to get it up into the into their. I think it's Kiff Callen Park is what it's called there. But then there's an the elementary school right behind it that we can make that connection as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, the two rivers hold trailway. Um, there's a great article in the Morning Call a couple weeks ago. Um, they were awarded a, a grant from Lea Valley Greenways this past year as well. They're probably putting in about 100 different signs, um, large map signs and trailheads in each municipality and directional signage throughout the whole about 20, 30 mile loops and integrated system of trails in that area. And that will be completed by the end of this year. Um, that's pretty much all my updates. <coughs> Any other questions? Uh, do we have any? Okay, uh, um, no, this is something different. It's not related to that. If you yeah. want to go I just, ahead. Do we have areas for like ATV riding or? or we don't. Um, the closest places really are like up in Carbon yeah, or further place. north. Um, there might be a, there might be a private one up in like Mincy area, but I'm not positive. Yeah. But most of it is not. We don't have any public lands that we allow any uh, ATV on. Mm -hmm. But there are grants out there if it's something that down the road we want to look at. I, I do get a lot of people <laughs> request that, but yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just laughing because I'd just say a street in Williams Township <laughs> where we have no local police. Uh, it's, it's not an uncommon sight. Um, anyway. Um, I, I had a separate question, um, and I guess Stan is here, so maybe it's better addressed to him. Uh, we received... Um, uh, an ordinance proposal from the administration regarding uh, an easement at Wayne Group Park. Um, do you want to tell us what that is and, and why, or, or, or Brian, if you're familiar with it, what it is and why uh, we have to do that? You're on, Stan. Hi, everybody. Hi. I bet you didn't think you were going to talk. <laughs> I, I, even, I just heard your voice, actually. Um, <laughs> The two hundred fifty thousand dollars for is for the right of way that the township requires for the uh, warehouse development on Willowbrook Road. Uh, in negotiations with the Rockefeller Group, we we received one hundred thousand dollars of in cash that goes into the parks, 
and $150,000 of um, work to be done. So it's speaking with Gordy again on that this morning in terms of where he would like to allocate that inside of Wayne 8 Group. Additionally, um, been able to negotiate uh, with administration. If you guys remember, we have the steel bridge on Willowbrook Road. Yeah. Um, I, I have um, verbal approvals from Rockefeller that they're going to fix that bridge for free for us. Yeah. That'll probably be a two and a half million dollar project. Are they beefing it up for the trucks? I'm sorry? Are they beefing, uh, beefing it up for the, no. the next trucks? No, no, no trucks can go north. That's a well, uh, tractor trailers cannot, um, heavy loads trailers cannot, it's only for, you'll see the small box trucks and or employees. Because part of that is the townships requiring uh, that work to be done because across the way is you have the Fuller Estate. And so the Rockefeller Group is funding our bridge for free, which is wonderful. Yes. Yeah, I it was something I was surprised to see it uh, it's, appear. It's been, um, it's been in the making for a little bit of you know okay. of um, been some agita sometimes and happy your uh, <laughs> Yeah, my concern is that it, it really I don't I remember some things being discussed, but never I didn't know we, we were going to receive a specific proposal. It's a lot um, of money. As we as got we, we got much more money than the people that are down and if uh, that are down on Airport Road at, and. And uh, Willowbrook, we got more money from them as well. So that money will be reinvested back into the park. Is that what you're saying? Park. Oh, um, yeah, and, we're, and Gordy and I were talking about this morning. We talked about it as well many times. These these gentlemen do an outstanding job in open space, and then we also have Jim Wilson. These Jim, Brian, and Gordy work tremendously together, as we always talked about, and that we talked about money going to the maintenance facility because when the maintenance facility was first built. They forgot to put in, you know, and running <laughs> water and a toilet, you know, and it feels, it's bad. They, they don't have a, a, a decent place to, like, wash your hands or go to the bathroom. You know, and that's not right. You know, we have a bunch of good men who work in the park system because they're out all nights plowing. You, you know, it's like a Morgan in a barn. It's like a what? Morgan <laughs> in a barn, an old barn. So that's it. Uh, hopefully I answer all your questions. That's what I wanted to know. I have nothing else. To this. Any other questions? No. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank and, you. Uh, oh. Okay. Great.